shooting planes down with a tank cannon can be very satisfying and can certainly create some only in battlefield moments. But for people who are just starting the game, the ones who don't play vehicles often, or the ones who have tried it but failed, I have some tips for you today. These are often personal experience that led me from a total newbie at this to what I would describe as somewhat competent. I wouldn't go as far as being a pro or an expert, but I want to share with you the things I did and how I was able to go from missing 100% of my shots to hitting maybe 10-20% to of my shots. Yes, it is still pretty low and of course that depends on what kind of targets you go for and how far they are and so on. But for the ones who feel frustrated that you are missing a lot of shots, don't be. I am on the same boat and here we go through some tips that may make you more consistent with it. Number 1. Pick a round and go with it. What I mean by this is to pick either HE or AP rounds to practice with. The reason behind this is consistency. The nature of plane sniping is based on many factors and these change by a lot. The distance, the size, the speed, the direction, the elevation of the target, and the ballistics of the projectile. There are nothing you can do about the target as it is not under your control. But if there is one thing you can control, you have to make the most out of it. This is the same for bolt action sniping in the game. The more you use one rifle, the better you will be. Instead of switching between guns all the time, by sticking with one rifle with one particular bullet velocity, the more consistent you will be for getting the headshot and so on. But I digress. Here I want to show you a graph so you will understand how this works. Here you see all the initial projectile velocity of all the tank rounds and there are roughly three different groups. The fastest are the AP rounds that are typically above 600 meters per second up to 800 meters per second depending on which tank you're using. The second is the HE rounds which are typically in the mid 400 meters per second to mid 500 meters per second. Then you have the slowest group which are below that and those consist of other specialized rounds like the auto cannons, the tiger's heat rounds, the howitzer rounds and also note the panzer 4 and the stux 4's 75mm HE rounds. That is the default barrel, the non-upgraded one if you are not familiar with the nomenclature. One side note is that there is also drag in the equation that means the further the round goes, the slower it goes just like that in real life. But these are pretty consistent between the type of rounds so as long as you stick to the category, there aren't a whole lot you need to compensate for. And so what do you do with this information? I will tell you mine and you can decide on what is best for you. What I did was to use HE rounds as much as I can unless I am already in AP mode and I have to make the shot within a short window. What this does is give me as much consistency as possible. I can hop between tanks, be it the Tiger or the Valentine or the Panzer IV. I can always rely on the approximately 500 meters per second round velocity to gauge my shots. The fact that there are loads of HE rounds compared to the specialized ammo that you carry on your tank also makes it more forgiving if you miss. I also like to reserve my AP rounds for engaging enemy tanks since those can drastically change the outcome of the engagement. But if you want to use mainly AP rounds to engage enemy planes, that is totally fine. It is actually easier to use AP rounds since they travel faster which decreases the amount of target leading required. Of course, there are some exceptions. If you choose to use the Sackhound with the Little John adapter, the HG and the AP rounds are almost identical in speed which are 770 meters per second and 800 meters per second respectively, and those are the fastest rounds in the game. So by virtue of this, the Sackhound is arguably the best tank to use to snipe planes out of the sky. And in contrast to the Stackhound, the Panzer IV and the Stuk IV's default barrel HE rounds act more like a howitzer round, and it is much harder to use than your other typical HE rounds due to their slow speed. So in conclusion to this section, pick a round you are comfortable with and stick to it for consistency. Number 2. Use the reticle mode or zoom mode. This enables more tools you can employ when trying to hit a plane or any target for that matter. It also increases the responsiveness to sudden movements, at least that's true on PC. When in first person non zoom in mode, it always feels like there is an acceleration curve or some kind of inertia on the tank turret movement, and that often makes precise aiming difficult for me. Zooming in allows me to make quick adjustments without feeling the heavy sensation. This is especially important for plane sniping since the target often makes sudden movements and they are often quite nimble, so the more precise your crosshair movement is, the better you can account for this situation. And since we are talking about reticle, just a quick side note regarding the aiming triangle on the German tanks, the center of the screen is the apex of the center triangle, 
and not the center of the triangle. It often doesn't matter a whole lot on the ground targets, but for planes, this is quite important to know since if your aim is slightly off, it may not hit the plane at all or hit the wing or the rudder which results in partial damage instead of an instant kill. Also in this mode, you can use the aiming triangles on the German tanks or the horizontal line in the British tanks as a guide to gauge movements of the target. Which brings me to the next tip. Number 3. Gauge movements of your targets. So enemy planes do not always fly in a predictable way for a long time, but there are always time they do. And it's those time that you have to capitalize on. For example, these are when planes fly parallel to the horizon while turning or flying straight at you or chasing a friendly plane. These are the times you can best predict where their plane will be in the next second or two. One of the best ways to gauge the movements of the target is to use the horizon and to use the horizontal line or the aiming triangle of your reticle. For example, when the plane is flying across the screen, you can trace the plane and see if it deviates vertically by the distance to the horizon or the distance to the horizontal markings on the reticle. Here you can see a clip where the plane is simply flying straight across parallel to the ground and it was easy to gauge the vertical movements of the plane and the only thing I have to account for is the lead. Here's another one that a minimal vertical movement was made by the enemy plane when using my aiming triangle as a guide and I was able to predict the small amount of vertical lead on top of the horizontal lead required for the shot. Other than using the horizontal lines on the reticle or the horizon, there are also other things you can use to predict the movements of the plane. One particularly common one is to trace around from the enemy planes themselves. These are particularly common when aiming at the enemy fighters chasing a friendly plane or when they are performing a strafing run on the ground targets. Here I will show you some clips where the enemy was firing their cannon and it makes a fantastic guide for you to aim at. And depending on the distance of the plane, you will probably need to aim slightly above the line to adjust for the gravitational force on your projectile. As for how much horizontal lead you will need to account for the speed of the plane when flying across your screen, that will depend on what plane it is, how far it is, how fast it is actually flying, and the type of round you're using. There are ways you can do in real life using stadium metric range finding and so on, but of course real life tanks rarely if at all try to hit planes. Nowadays they all have computers to do the work but that's besides the point. In this game when everything is manual and often requires split second decision on aiming and then firing at the plane, there aren't a whole lot of calculation methods you can rely on for determining how much to lead. This is one of the things that is going to get cliche and that is to practice often. But how, you say, do I just keep shooting and what do I do? And here's the next tip. Number 4. Shoot often but start with easy targets. This seems like common sense but it is how I started and made me better at it. Whenever there are easy targets, and those would be slow firing bombers flying straight at you or flying parallel to the horizon across the screen. Basically targets that are mostly moving in one axis, especially the ones closer to you. By attempting to hit those planes over and over again, it will start to train your muscle memory. It also allows you to actually get some satisfaction from getting your first or second plane kills. But don't stop there. While moving across the map from point to point, I often keep my eye out for planes whether it is far or close. And if there is one, I will just quickly fire a shot off and see how close I get. The more shots you attempt, the more likely you are going to get closer with each shot. I can assure you that maybe 95% of them will miss. And that is still probably the case for me for random far shots I make when moving around the map. But that's okay. Every single one of those shots will bring you closer and prepare you for the shots that actually matter. But one thing for sure. Don't just sit at the back of your map firing rounds after rounds at planes and don't actually help your team out by playing the game. It adds frustration when the team loses and you don't actually get the plane kills you want. I recommend doing that between objectives when you are otherwise just holding the forward button doing nothing. Capitalize that time and fire at will. But then you say, I just keep missing. There's no feedback to what I'm doing right or doing wrong. I don't know if I'm firing too soon, too late, too high, too low. What exactly am I doing wrong so I can actually improve? If you ask that, then you are one step closer to the goal. I will let you know what I did to get that feedback. This brings me to the next point. Number 5. Record your gameplay. If you are on PC, use whatever recording software you have like OBS, Shadowplay, Relive, anything. And if you are on console, use a capture card or simply a camera. As long as you can record something and watch it back, that is the goal. So how does this help? I started recording my gameplay for YouTube of course, but because of this, I was able to start rewatching my gameplay and go frame by frame on shots I thought I should have hit 
Often that tells me exactly what I did wrong. Here, I will show you an example. Here you can see that I clearly missed this plane, so I slowed it down. I will trace that round frame by frame and see where it is in relation to the enemy plane. Here you can see that the round is still visible as it crosses the plane. That means by the time the round should have intersected with the plane, it is actually still somewhere between me and the enemy. That means my lead is too short and I have to lead further as the round did not have enough time to travel to the target. And by doing this over and over again, you will start to get the idea of what you are doing wrong. This is how soldiers or gun enthusiasts target train. It is by having a spotter or some kind of feedback method that let them know where they are hitting and by how much adjust that make the next shot a better one. I wish I can tell you if it is a plane A flying right, you aim one triangle ahead of the plane, or if it is plane B flying up, you aim two triangles behind or whatnot. But there are simply too many variables with too little time for you to actually calculate before you can make the shot. It all comes down to practice and shooting on the fly. The more you do it, the more feedback you get, the better you will be. And this video hopefully gives you some tools that will make you better at it. But hey, how about a bonus tip? You stay for this long so I have to give you something in return. While this is not something everyone can do, it is something you can try if you have the chance. It is to have a squad mate in a plane that you can communicate with. If they have a plane tailing them that they can't shake off, have them fly low towards you. They have a chance to get the enemy off their tail and you have a shot at shooting a plane down. Win-win situation if you ask me. Here I will show you a couple clips of exactly that. Alright, middle of the bridge, coming in over, over Delta. Bringing them low. I got him. Yes! You got him. <laughs> you got him. <laughs> Fly towards me. Left side. He has a... I got him! Oh yeah. my god, nice job. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know down in the comment section whether you have other tips and tricks for shooting planes down. Also let me know if this has helped you. Subscribe for more, check out my other tank guide for fighting other tanks in my playlist. Feel free to give a thumbs up and share if you like this and a thumbs down if you don't. Have a fantastic day and I'll see you all again soon.